Amen. Appreciate that very, very much. What a day it is to be able to be in the house of the Lord and to worship. And uh, as we get older, we begin to think how appreciative we are of our health to be able to come and congregate and uh, be able to share with one another and build each other up in the faith. Uh, what, what, a, what a treasure that that is. And being able to congregate. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourself together as a habit of some, but all the more as you say, as you see the day drawing near. How many of y'all think we're getting close to the day that Christ is going to return? I, th I think, you know, you don't have to turn on many channels on the TV, whether it be, you know, positive or negative, to understand there's some changes going on right now, a cultural change right now that is very anti-Christ driven. And uh, I think it's interesting that, that a lot of the people that were negative towards prophecy the last 20 years have now got on board to start preaching about prophecy. Uh, the world is starting to, to change rapidly, and people want to know what's going to happen in the future. Well, if you happen to have a Bible in your hand, and you study the Bible at all, you'll understand where it's all going. It's not just a pendulum that swings back and forth, but we are going to go to the glory of God, that His, his will and His purposes are being accomplished, that He's a sovereign God, and He is going to get accomplished what He established to do. So we are just in it for the ride, so to speak, because as believers, we put our faith and trust in, in the Lord Jesus Christ, and we know our eternal destiny is secure based upon our trust in Him and what He accomplished at the cross. And it, uh, if you have your Bible, turn real quick. We're going to look at Zechariah for our text this morning, but I want to reiterate uh, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. That's one of the three uh, most important verses in terms of the rapture. Uh, that the Lord is going to take us and spare us out of having to go through this thing that we call the tribulation. It's a time of uh, Jacob's trouble. It's the 70th week of Daniel. And we are not going to go through that because we put our trust in Jesus. Now in verse 12, verse 10, it says, Because thou hast kept the, the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So there's that hour of temptation. It's referred to as the hour of temptation. That's the tribulation. And uh, we are kept out of that. We are spared from having to go through the tribulation. And uh, in Zechariah chapter 12, I want to get us to turn back to Zechariah chapter 12. Chapter 12, 13, and 14 are very important uh, chapters in terms of the prophetic clockwork because we understand that uh, Jerusalem is going to go through a purging. And we're going to read about that this morning, this great purging that will take place. And uh, the laughter that is there is going to be turned to mourning, and uh, the mourning will turn to joy, because the Lord is going to return. The Lord is going to return, and uh, He is going to slay the wicked, the nations that have risen up against Jerusalem and against Israel, and He will slay them. And uh, then... We see that uh, all of Israel will be saved. Let, chapter 11, verse 26 of Romans, the prayer was for the Paul that he said that all Israel would be saved. There's never been a time that all of Israel has been saved, except for this time at the end of the tribulation, where only the saved Jews will go into the millennial reign of Christ. Isn't it exciting to be a believer, to know the future? I mean, you know, people think that things are happening just accidentally, just like, uh, well, that's just a coincidence. No, it's not. God has a purpose and plan, and these things are being accomplished right before our very eyes. But in chapter 12, in verse 6, I want to start off with verse 6. And it says, In that day I will make the governors of Judah like a hearth of fire among the wood, and like a torch of fire in a sheath, and they shall devour all the people around about, on the right hand and on the left. And Jerusalem shall be inhabited again in her own place, even in Jerusalem. So uh, you see that Israel will be regathered together. If you remember in the life of Christ, just uh, days before Christ was crucified, that he told his disciples that all, st all the stones, no rock or stone, will be left unturned. And from 70 AD up until 1948, Israel was not a state. And uh, they were scattered. And, uh, and later on in this chapter right here, it's going to talk about smiting the shepherd. And the sheep so scattered, while well, they smited the shepherd, which is Jesus, and the sheep scattered, the, the Israelites scattered. They never were a nation until 1948, 
and now they are there to stay. And people wonder, how serious are they about staying in Jerusalem right now? Well, Hal Lindsey has a, uh, a commentary that he uh, cited, the Samson Principle. And what that is, is that Israel is of the understanding that if, if they're about ready to be overrun, they're taking everybody with them. In military terms, that's what's going to happen. They're, yeah, they have the nuclear capabilities of taking a lot of people out with them. So that's one deterrent from Iran and many of the other countries from trying to overrun them because there is a deterrent there with the Samson principle. But Israel is going to be challenged by all the nations of the world. It's hard to imagine that. Can you imagine 200 million soldiers coming across the Euphrates marching with the intent of destroying your country? Can you imagine that? How about the kings of the north? Gog and Magog facing the northern plains, coming down, marching against Israel, and God smites them and stops them in their tracks. How about the Western Confederacy? These are things that are all going to happen. But it, what's going to happen is it's going to unite Israel together and strengthen them. And uh, even though it'll almost be a losing battle until the Lord intervenes 